You caught him napping, almost literally. Uh, it looks that way on the video, and it's very impactive the way that the Spanish authorities were able to execute the warrant and arrest him. Uh, the reality is, though, that Andrew Moran, for a considerable period of time, has been involved in much wider organised crime than simply conspiracy to rob the original fence that he committed back in 2005. Uh, you look at the um, cache of firearms that was found at the address where he was, two handguns and 60 rounds of ammunition. That gives you a picture of the kind of individual we're dealing with. Yeah, and he was convicted, obviously, in his absence, because, I mean, he, he, he got out of the dock, he, he managed to escape, but then they convicted him afterwards, as it were. Absolutely. Um, it was quite a vicious attack back in 2005 on the Royal Mail security guards, um, and he escaped with £25,000 worth of cash um, and been on the run uh, from 2009 when he jumped the dock. Why do they go to Spain, so many of them? You'd think, they, <laughs> you'd think well, the, that's the first place the cops are going to look. I mean, there are a number of reasons, and, and to be fair, it isn't just Spain where many of our no, criminals of go, but... Um, First of all, there is an expat community there, so there's an opportunity to blend in with others. Um, the Spanish authorities themselves have got significant resources spread across their country trying to capture people like this, but of course they're stretched as well. So uh, with a combination of using fraudulent documents, changing identity, uh, English individuals who are part of organised crime groups can set up and get associates and start to earn a, con uh, a lifestyle commensurate with the organised background that they want to have. Yeah, and, and how did you find him? And uh, when? I mean, when did you know, <coughs> know that he was there? Well, we go back to uh, before Christmas of last year where uh, intelligence indicated that he was in Spain and the Spanish did the best at, on that occasion to try and arrest him. You will be aware, I'm sure, that uh, on that occasion he managed to elude the police. Oh, but, yes, of course. Yeah. But a firearm was found then as well, a loaded firearm, considerable amount of money and also five kilos of uh, cannabis. So that demonstrates the sort of kind of criminality he's involved in. Uh, certainly for the last six months, we've been collecting intelligence and using a variety of covert methods to track him down because he is one of the most significant uh, outstanding offenders from the UK. And Titan was determined that with the help of the serious organised crime agency in the Spanish, we would be able to bring him back and put him before the courts. Yeah, sentencing. yeah Titan is what you call your organised crime unit. Yeah. Is, is, is there an argument that says, um, look... He's out of this country now, um, and it's very regrettable, to say the least, that he's not in jail where he should be. But um, we're pretty pressed ourselves, the police here in this country. We should be concentrating on people who are doing bad things in this country. That would be a, a, an easy um, choice to make particularly with shortened resources. But the reality is this. Many of the individuals who leave this country uh, and travel over to Spain and live over there continue to commit organised crime that impacts on us. I have absolutely no doubt that there are many organised criminals, such as Moran, involved in the importation of drugs and firearms back into the UK. And also, it's really important that when people are put before the courts, that ultimately, if they're convicted, they find their way into prison. And that's what we've done with Moran.